Hey guys, welcome back to another video, or welcome if you're new. I thank you so much for being here. Today, we're going to be talking about what true freedom is in Christ. If you're a believer, this is the perfect video for you, but if you're not a believer, then this is still a really good video for you because at the end, you're, you're gonna find out you're gonna find out a lot about this little club that we're in so in my last video the lord brought me to galatians specifically chapter 5 and chapter 6 i was reading it but i wasn't really um understanding what i was reading what i was reading so i had to meditate on it and now we're back and i i got a lot of information a lot of good gems so what true freedom is in christ and what it looks like it's really simple but it's not something that we would think of um, we all know that Jesus died on the cross for us and his crucifixion gave us freedom forever. Like he removed us from the chains and the shackles of being slaves to sin. But have we fully comprehended that being saved and born again means that you really have already won everything? Now we have our lives and stuff and we have like goals that, you know, we, we want to complete, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. That's fine that's 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 just life like how many of us are aware that this liberty requires us to pick up our cross every day and you may be thinking like girl what are you talking about what is picking up your cross i'm gonna tell you guys in luke chapter 9 verse 23 and jesus said to them if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me denying yourself denying yourself and denying your flesh literally means you have to die you have to die <laughs> that sounds crazy but you have to die to your flesh every single day you have to deny your fleshly desires and try to pick up the fruits of the spirit if you're born again the holy spirit already dwells in you but you have to actively choose jesus every day and make sure that your eyes are fixed on him all of the time and taking up your cross is centering jesus in your everyday life and keeping him close even with day-to-day -day things if you're taking a walk Make it a spirit walk. If you're gonna listen to music, listen to music that glorifies God. You're choosing to serve Jesus every day and find ways to serve him in everyday things that you do. That's what taking up your cross is. And denying your flesh is, is saying no to your fleshly desires. When you really grasp and continually, continuously remind yourself what happened on Calvary, um, Doing things of the world or just looking back at the world and back at how you used to be, you almost feel disgusted, you're embarrassed, etc., etc. You kind of feel all these negative things. This walk with Christ will become second nature. It's not even second. This is this is just what it is now. Like this is the lifestyle. What I wrote down is just looking back when you've been washed by the blood, it makes you feel everything because you have a new set of eyes. You literally have spiritual eyes now you know how like you know how like new age people be like i've opened my third eye like no like actually my spiritual eyes are open and, and this is this is the reality we can't see the spiritual realm but we can definitely feel it and some people actually have had vi visions of the actual spiritual realm but what i'm saying is 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 once you you've accepted jesus it's almost like it almost feels worse. When you choose Christ, life doesn't get any easier. You really do see everything differently and you walk differently, you talk differently, you look different. Everything changes because your heart is going through a transformation. Walking with Christ, being a disciple of Christ, a student, it's really hard. Maybe you still have like very like secular friends or, or atheist friends or LGBTQ plus friends or very hateful, judgmental friends or Friends that smoke and drink and do all these crazy things. Denying yourself while still loving these people and being around them can be really hard. So it's literally a battle between spirit and flesh all of the time. All of the time. And you want to make sure that the spirit is winning and operating at all times. And this is for the people who may not be with Christ or maybe you're lukewarm. Sur sur surrendering. Okay. Let's speak English, Mona. <laughs> Surrendering yourself to the one who gave you life not only gets you to the kingdom, but you have freedom. True freedom. 
true freedom in this wicked world. I'm telling you right now, Christ is the answer. And it's not a one, two, three, you know, it's not, it's not that easy, but I promise you, he will take away the things that you are struggling with. When I tell you a few months ago, I was smoking and I was drinking. I had stopped and then I, I started again, but I fully got delivered. I was struggling with same sex attraction, homosexuality. I am fully delivered. I had a soul tie. I'm fully delivered. It is gone. Like it's actually gone. And you can just see it. Like I literally act so different. That is, that's not me. That is Christ within me. You have to believe that he died for you and took, he, he literally died the death that we were supposed to die, that we deserved, literally. And then he literally gave us everything. Once you accept Christ, your life is fully sealed. Like you're good. Like you're guaranteed a good life. You may not even know what a good life is because what you think you want, that's, that's not God's plan. It's that times a million. So, um, after the Lord took me to Galatians last week, I was set on what Paul was telling the body of Christ. There is nothing that you can do to make God welcome you or love you any more than he already does. Like, there's nothing that you can do. He's just going to welcome and he's just going to love you just because. You literally don't have to do anything. But keep listening because that, that kind of sounds too good to be true. Just keep listening. We're going to go to Galatians. We're going to read scripture. So it's not just me talking, but you guys are getting the truth. Galatians chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the word, to the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. This is the King James Version. This is really hard for some people to understand. What Paul is saying is that there's there's no works that you can do for that will make God like say, oh, like, oh, like he really loves me or she really loves me. Because, um, you know, back in the day, they used to get circumcised to prove that that they love God and that they're a child of God or you know what I mean. And then like that in modern time is like baptism. Um, some people still think that you have to be baptized, dunked under water, in order to be saved or in order to be a child of God or accepted by God. That is completely false. All you have to do is have faith and truly believe that he died for you and literally gave you the gift of freedom. That is it. There is no, there is absolutely nothing that you have to do. So if you're one of those people that has fell so far back and they're, they're so deep in a hole, literally Jesus is down in that hole with you believe it or not like when you think you've hit rock bottom Jesus is the rock at the bottom period <laughs> in verse 2 it says we're gonna repeat this again Christ shall profit you nothing if you feel like you have to do something in order for God to love you then you don't fully believe that his death covered everything you don't fully believe that his blood fixed everything so don't, don't, don't feel like you gotta, oh, I gotta do this before I accept Jesus into my life, or I gotta, I gotta stop listening to this, or I gotta stop watching this, or I gotta stop doing, no, you can accept him now because he says come as you are. You won't stay as you are because your heart is going to be transformed. So there's a lot of people who say, like, for example, oh, like, you can be gay and Christian. It's, it's complicated. Really, no. Because if you accepted Christ and you're being delivered, you won't have the desires that you have. You won't want to fornicate. You won't want to masturbate. And you won't want to, um, you know, live the homosexual lifestyle. But technically, yes, you can be gay and Christian. You can be gay and accept Jesus. If you're saying that, I'm assuming that you're new in the faith. And that's how I felt when I was lukewarm. I was gay, and I still, I believed in God, but I was so confused because you got people telling you that it's okay to live this life and then you got people telling you no it's not okay and you can't be here you guys need to get in the word of God because that leaven is exactly what steers people away from the truth and and away from eternity with Christ just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus okay let him work in you stop listening to other people that aren't even rooted in the word if somebody's talking to you or you at a church or any anything and they talking and they're not getting nothing from the Bible you better right 
you better run okay all right galatians verses um seven through nine says ye did run well who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth this prosecution cometh not from him that calleth you a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump that word leaven just came up again leaven is lies leaven is corruption leaven is um defilement that's what that is it's not it's not the full truth what the what the devil will do what the enemy will do he he literally knows the word better than we do so he will tell some of the truth but he'll sprinkle some lies in there and that's how he will get you but he won't be able to deceive you if you're seeking the truth even if you don't own a bible you have a phone if you're watching this you're you're watching this on something um or or you can just find somebody that's that's really rooted in christ you know christians are everywhere his disciples are everywhere but don't be fooled when you're hearing leaven a little bit of lies that's that's not coming from god there's going to be a lot of false prophets there's there's so many right now there's going to be so many people that claim that they know god and have a relationship with god I hear it, I see it all the time, and they do absolutely do not. They don't. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Leaven is, it's like poison. It's literally like poison. One drop, it will travel and literally disintegrate your whole body. Like, one little lie, it just turns into a million lies. Somebody can seem so serious and, and then you'll just believe them. Like, that's just crazy. And I used to do that. It's just really important that you that you take the armor of God and you put it on every day. And the word is just something that you really take time to understand for yourself. Soon, you're going to need to remember this because, trust me, we're going to be prosecuted. Trust. In other countries, people are still getting killed for being Christian. People still have to hide the fact that they believe in God. There's still underground churches. That should tell you all that you need to know. You know, America is it's looking all right right now, but we really don't know what's going to happen. Okay, so back to freedom. The enlightenment that we're all looking for, it's it's so accessible <laughs> that it's, it's, it's funny. This um, is going to sound a little bit crazy, especially if you're early on your walk like me. But true freedom is it's found in serving others. Yeah. Yeah. That was a surprise to me too, because when I moved back home, I thought, yo, I'm going to be on my solo journey, and I can't wait to separate myself from the world and just focus on God. And to be honest, that doesn't sound really bad, but um, that's just, that is, that's, that's not it all the way. You're not all the way there. This can be hard to believe because our society and modern day law is drilling it in our minds that it's all about self. And if you're on social media... You literally can't deny that this is this is what it is right now, especially in our generation. Self-care, solo diaries, going to do this by myself, detachment, how to detach from others. They're literally teaching you how to be in your own little bubble, in your own world, and become lonely and depressed and um, separate it from God. Because that's not actually what God created us for. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve because Adam was supposed to be by himself okay we need each other we need each other and another point is none none of this was ever about ourselves like oh it's it's all about me or you know this is my life and you you got it all wrong this was never about you <laughs> this was never about me it's about serving God Galatians 5 verses 13 and 14 for brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So as soon as you start obsessing about yourself and, and getting too consumed with yourself, you god is looking down and he still love you but he's like girl what do you what who do you think you are literally who do you who do you think you are love thy neighbor everybody has heard that and they 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 they, they be using it for the wrong reasons but yeah you fulfill you fulfill god's law not society's law because obviously society doesn't want you to do that 
I swear, after after vid, after the demic, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that word, but you know what I mean. 2020, that era, something happened where people have just just notice how nobody's nobody's outside right now. I mean, there's a couple of kids and, and their grandma. But, like, even that is crazy. Like, kids don't hang out with kids. People my age don't hang out with people my age. It's like people don't even know how to socialize anymore. That's that's the world the worldly law. That's that's what's normalized in the modern world. But in the word of God it actually tells us to come together and to serve one another and to love one another. That is fulfilling the law. That is where you find true freedom and happiness. You notice that you literally you can't survive like you don't survive without other people in your life. You you literally can't survive. And you may be thinking, like, serve one another. Didn't didn't you just say that that works don't matter? Didn't Paul say that the works don't mean anything? No. When you've been granted freedom, like I said, once you have fully grasped what Jesus did for you and the fact that you're set for life, serving others in works, that is something that you want to do. You're not doing it because you feel like you have to do it. It's just something that you want to do. Like I said, it becomes second nature, but it's not really second nature because that's just who you are now in Christ. Works are to serve God, not to prove yourself worthy. That's what I wrote down. And think about it like this: like I heard, I heard a girl, I heard a girl say this on TikTok. Imagine you got a house with your partner, and you're cleaning, and you're cleaning, and and they're sitting down and they're not cleaning. And you're kind of feeling some type of way, but you don't want to tell them to get up and help you clean because you just wish that they would want to help you clean. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like God's free will. Like, he's not going to ever force you to do anything. When people say, oh, why is the world so bad? Why would, why would, because he gave us choice. He gave you a choice to do all those disgusting things. He gave he gave people the choice to do all of the disgusting things that made this world so fallen. And yeah, he gave the devil dominion. But God is still in full control. God is still in full control. When you're led by the Spirit, you are set apart. Don't become conceited and don't envy those who you may think are living a life more valuable than your own. Galatians 5 verses 18 through 26. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law, which is the worldly law. What society expects you to do and wants you to do, what you see everybody else doing. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Idolatry, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, which is masturbation. Idolatry. Witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedations, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and, and things like that. So, yeah, y'all know what that is. It's literally like all the bad things. <laughs> of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you if you think doing all of this stuff is cute and this is your lifestyle and you're lukewarm and you thinking God's grace is really gonna He's gonna be like Girl, who who are you? And you will be sent to hell. Like that's not trying to be scary. It's just like why do you want to live like that anyway? Living like hell on earth it feels like heaven. It feels really good. And then when you're with Christ and you're trying to go to the kingdom, it feels like hell. It's it's set up like that on purpose. The devil sets it up like that on purpose. He will groom you and deceive you to the point where you think Christians are brainwashed and you think that we're in a cult. Don't be deceived. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Meekness is like gentleness and then temperance is like stopping what you're doing or moderation temperance temper stopping realizing what you're doing against such there is no law 
when you operate in these things, the world can't tell you what to do. When you're walking with God, the world cannot tell you what to do. And they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So if you claim God, then you need to act like you claim God. If you have the fruits of the Spirit, when you open your mouth, you better be bearing fruit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So don't do things to get glory or to like show off or like be a pick me or think that you're better because you're with Christ. That's kind of what I was doing when I first came to Christ. Don't start thinking that you are better because you're going to reap what you sow. And don't envy one another. So if you have a friend that's in Christ, don't envy them or wish that you were them because you can literally have what they have. And, and nobody's, nobody's, above, nobody's above one another or anything like that. Or even if you're in Christ and you see people who are also in Christ and, and you feel like they're, they're living a life that's better than yours, that's not good because you don't believe that what God has for you right now and what is coming for you, you don't feel like that is enough. You're not appreciative. You don't really, you don't fully believe. And this actually has a lot to do with freedom because freedom is space. It's, it's room. It's capacity for others, not just yourself. Freedom isn't just for you. Everybody on earth deserves it. Everybody was made in God's image, but not everybody chooses God. Some people are really children of the devil, believe it or not. Um, it's to hear. Freedom is to hear and to learn and understand people and encourage them not to be slaves to their sin but in a cautious manner so what I was doing I was being judgmental and judging people but I wasn't coming to them in a cautious matter that's not helping save souls being a righteous disciple of Jesus Christ is in Galatians 6 verses 1 through 5 brethren if a man be overtaken in fault which is sin ye which is spiritual which is you restore such and one in the spirit of meekness gentleness like I said before cautious cautiousness watch yourself try to try to really come from a place of understanding consider yourself also lest though also be tempted so you gotta you gotta really you gotta watch how you talk to people one and then you gotta also make sure that you're not being tempted by whatever they're doing you know it's all love at the end of the day don't be encouraging it and you know when the time is right the Lord will help you will will help you speak the lord will be speaking through you and you know not everything is going to be fixed in the in, in the first say so or whatever because at the end of the day it's jesus doing the work but you can be somebody that's dropping little piece, pieces of fruit you can be leaving something with them but do it in the spirit of meekness verse two bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of christ feeling what they're feeling um being an empath <laughs> That is fulfilling the law of Christ, believe it or not. And people people, people like to really drag this and say, oh, Jesus hung out with sinners. Okay, yeah, but he didn't just sit there and let them sin, bro. He literally told them to sin no more. So remember that when somebody tries to use that line. And it don't even be people that are in Christ. They just, they just be hearing stuff and then they just be saying it. Anyway, for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone not in another for every man shall bear his own burden so you literally just said bear each other's burdens and then at the end you say um man shall bear their own burden be there for people feel people understand listen but you know let them let them go like if somebody if you're trying to warn somebody and truly help them and then they're not listening you gotta let them go. Let him prove his own work and let them celebrate within themselves and not with a, with another person because that, that just leads to vainglory, provoking one another and envying one another, which is not fruits of the spirit at all. Serving people and being there for other people, that is true freedom. Those who belong in the family of believers should be treated as such. So, love thy neighbor. <laughs> that, that's basically what that means. And as disciples of Christ, this is just something that we have to learn. At a certain point, even I'm going to realize, like, I'm going to feel so much better not clapping back. 
but I'm still struggling with clapping back because you gotta watch how you talk to me. But still, I gotta bear the fruit of the spirit. You guys know what I mean. Just to um, emphasize on that, Galatians um, chapter six, verses six through ten. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Let him that is taught you, the disciple, disciple, sorry, disciple. Girl, you're making up new words. In the word communicate unto him that is teacheth in the, okay, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, hold on. I might be dyslexic. Let's start over. <laughs> Let him that is taught in the word, you, you're being taught, the disciple communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things so when i was meditating on this this is kind of what i grasped so we're being taught in the word um we communicate unto him which i feel like is man or we communicate unto him god that teacheth in all good things either way we disciples and we're students and we're walking with christ so we have to um spread the word spread the gospel bear good fruit, fulfill the law of Christ. Y'all get what I'm saying. Verse 7, be not deceived. God is not mocked at all. For whatsoever a man soweth, he shall reap. Verse 8, for he that soweth of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. I don't even need to expand on that. That Paul snaps. <laughs> and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto whom who are the household of faith. Um, I want to emphasize verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Like I said, this is hard. Don't become tired doing these things. As soon as you feel like falling, bro, don't because you're literally going to miss what's in front of you as corny as it sounds just don't give up y'all god is returning tenfold and mind you before before you've done good unto all men you already earned that so it's not it's not a treat after you've done everything or after you no, you you already got it and like i said these things will just flow out of you don't faint for in due season we shall reap Man, we literally do not deserve that at all. You literally have everything. I don't know how many times I got to say it. You have, you got everything. Just because God loves you. That's it. That's the only reason why. Even if you're dirty and raggedy, you, you still earned it. So, yeah. Now you have to walk in the truth. Jesus is alive and active. These miracles don't just miracle and miracle. You know, the things that you see, they didn't just, they weren't just here. It's not magic. That's Jesus. You are seen and your freedom is something you never lose. So even when you fall short, because we all do, remember you you still have your freedom. And Jesus is never going to, you know, do the, oh, I take this back. He's never going to do that. Like You really got it. And you need to act like you got it. So when you're tired and when you're beat up, remember who actually died and took the expiration date off of your life. Literally, you never die. This flesh, it's going to go, but you, you're you never going to die. Your spirit's never going to die. You literally will live for eternity. You have a new body. You'll be on a new earth that's not as wicked as this one. You will never be tired again. That is what true freedom really is. Let's do a quick prayer. Lord, I thank you for this person on the other, my sister or my brother on the other side of the screen. Lord, I pray that you have filled them with the spirit, Lord. And that they have bared this really good fruit. And I hope this encourages them to get into your word, Lord. Um, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. And we thank you for everything that you have done for us. And the death that you died for us, Jesus. We will walk in your spirit, Lord. And we will live this life to serve you and to serve others. In Jesus' name, amen. Period. Yes, and I encourage y'all to read um, Galatians fully on your own because that was only that was literally only chapter five and chapter six i encourage y'all to read galatians for yourself because that is just amazing and yeah that's all i got for you guys today thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you guys in my next video